Welcome to Worthington Home. I'm Chris. Have you ever had a really challenging room to decorate? I know I certainly have, and I've been on a long journey with my front parlor, a room that is charming and in keeping with my house, which was built in the 1700s, but it has a very unique layout, which I'm going to share with you a little bit later. And when I was thinking about this video, I really struggled to even know where to start because it feels like this has been ongoing for so long. In truth, it's only been about two and a half years, so not that long. So the challenge I have with this room is that there's just not a lot of good places to put furniture. It's a small space and there's just a lot of barriers like the radiator, doorway one, the fireplace, and doorway two. And this is what Thrish, she says hello. So it just makes for a tricky seating area and I've really struggled with it. When I first moved into the house, my husband had already lived here for over 20 years. We had just gotten married and so we were in the process of merging our belongings, which is harder to do when you get married later in life. Anyway, he had already had the room staged with some furniture that was oversized and really didn't fit because he didn't really care how it looked. It was reasonably comfortable. It worked for him and he was certainly open to making some changes, but I'm going to show you what it looked like. As you can see, the furniture here is just lined up and it's very squished. Then when I moved in, I kept the dog in here temporarily. I brought in my furniture that was also squished. It was squished differently, but still just didn't fit. You couldn't really walk around the room at all and it just looked like the room couldn't breathe or move. That's my husband's dog, Wilson. They're now best friends in case you're wondering. So it needed some improvement. I then tried to add some lighter pieces of furniture, but it just ended up looking like some kind of an antique store display with random chairs in it. So after trying and failing a variety of things, I had a lucky break. I love to look on Facebook Marketplace. I probably check it out once a day at least. And I came across these two French settees that I thought would be perfect. I, I didn't think I would have room for two, but I thought for sure I could have room for one and then bring in one or two of my other pieces and make the whole room work that way. So I contacted the seller who was as nice as she could be. She lived in Washington, Connecticut, which frankly I hadn't even heard of. It was a good hour and a half drive from me, but it was a beautiful drive. I took my husband's pickup truck, which was pretty funny. I don't feel super comfortable driving it, but I was determined to get my furniture. I arrived at this couple's home. The house looked, you know, attractive. It was a historic house um, and it was very nice. And then when they let me in the front door, I was blown away by how gorgeous this house was. It was very misleading from the outside. Inside, it was really big. It was beautifully decorated. They had phenomenal antiques. And I found out that this gorgeous house was their, their weekend estate. Um, really, they lived on Park Avenue in New York City. She was an editor for one of the Hearst magazines. And um, I'm not sure what he did, but I'll tell you, I'd love a life where that's my weekend house. Anyway, I fell in love with the settee. I decided to take it. They also had this pretty French needlepoint chair mm -hmm. that they were selling um, separately, just as an aside. I ended up picking that up as well because that was so pretty. And then I came home to check out how everything would look in the house. Mm -hmm. So here you can see the settee with the English style bench. Um, they just didn't go. The two styles really clashed. And here's that sweet needlepoint chair that I also bought from the seller of the settee, as well as my dog. But once I got the settee in the house, I realized that I made a mistake. I should have gotten both because I figured if I had both in the room, they would really go well together and make the room feel more collected and designed. So I went back to the drawing board. I called the seller again. I picked up the second piece in my pickup truck. And here is the room afterwards with both pieces. And I was so pleased with how they looked. So I 
had both settees and the needlepoint chair and it was a success. When I bought the settees, the fabric was already stained and that was part of why the seller was getting rid of them. She didn't want to be bothered reupholstering them because she already had so many pieces that she wanted to reupholster. So she decided it was easier to let them go. And I was okay taking them stained because I figured I could reupholster them. I have someone that I use for projects. My husband and I have reupholstered a lot of pieces in our house. And so I figured, you know, I'm not gonna let that be a deterrent. Um, the fabric was, I don't know how well you could see from the video, but the fabric was a really pretty light yellow linen. So definitely not the correct color or fabric for a house with two dogs and two cats. And that became evident pretty fast when my cats, um, my cat at the time decided to walk through the plants in the room and then track the dirt all over the upholstery. So not good. Then we had a couple of people over and things got spilled and we got the kittens and more mayhem ensued. So the bottom line was the fabric was attractive, not a good fabric for my particular household. I needed something that was going to be far durable, something that would hide a multitude of sins and um, just could keep up with our lifestyle. I think it's important to know what your fabric needs are so you can make good choices and not spend your time feeling frustrated about stains and marks and other things that are just no fun to deal with. When I moved to this house about two and a half years ago, one of the first few things I did was invest in these custom valances. I absolutely love them. They have these wonderful birds. And I love the dark blue color flower, the leaves. I love everything about it. And the gold tones in the birds work really well with the gold tones in the walls. So I knew for sure this was going to have to stay. I realized if I wanted to use these valances, I was going to have to find a, a complementary fabric for my little settees. And since this fabric is beautiful, but also busy, I wasn't really sure what would look best with it. Ultimately, I found this fabric at Joanne Fabric for a really good price. And while the pattern looks a little bit outdated to me in some ways, I felt that next to the curtains, it really worked. And you can see it also brings out some of the gold in the wall color, and I did want to keep the wall color. So this was a match and I was excited to find something that I felt would be complimentary. I also had to find some trim for the settees um, and that trim is also called GIMP. So I went to Joanne Fabric to see what I could find and I ultimately selected something that I really liked a lot and thought went well with the fabric. Even though I had found the fabric and trim at Joanne Fabric in the store, they didn't have enough for my project, so I had to order everything online. I also ordered a new hot glue gun and glue cartridges, and once all of those things finally arrived in the mail, I was ready to get started with my reupholstery project. <laughs> Thank you.
So I thought I would show you how far I've come. Here are the sofas that I reupholstered. This one isn't finished yet because I ran out of hot glue. So you can see I just sort of tied the rest of the trim around the arm until I get the rest of the hot glue shipped in or I have a chance to pop to the store. But you can see that the blue looks nice with the valance. Let me see if I can go back further so you can really see the whole thing. So there you have it. So my question is, do I replace the rug? Because is the rug too busy with everything else? And I think it really is. And the rug is pulling, I don't know if you can see this, this is very actually like a tealish color blue that it's pulling. And there is no teal anywhere else. So even if that color was like bluer, I think it would be better. Um, of course, I still have to style the room, so please forgive the, the empty spaces that are still here. I'm still playing around with things. Anyway, yeah, I'll let you know what I decide. And if you have any suggestions or thoughts or comments, I would love to hear them. There's my dog's butt. Um, but I could definitely use a little advice. Okay, I tried a different rug in this room, and I think it's much better. You can see it has light blue, it has some navy blue, and it has some gold, all colors that you find in the room. So even though it is still busy, I think it goes better. And I think I'm happier with it. This is also a really nice rug that was in our laundry room of all places. So not a great space for it. I think that's better. So I thought I would show you how the room has progressed and I'm gonna pose another question to you. Again, I could use some feedback. Originally, I had this table, this little tea table in the room. Indy's immediately jumping on it. I had it in the room so that there was a place to put sort of beverages and food if I had people over in this room. But I think that it's too high and I think it's too crowded. I, I wonder if I can give you a better space of the room. See, I'm walking in and here's the table and then you walk through the door and there's the old rug. And I don't wanna to spin too fast because I know that makes people sick. But yeah, my question is whether I keep the table or I lose it. So let me show you now what it looks like with no table. Here it is with no table. I think it's much bigger and you can see it's so easy to walk from room to room. Excuse the books, this is a project for another day. And then here's another vantage point. So I think if I do get a table and I do still sort of feel like I need one, I think maybe it needs to be something very small and lower. And this is my little final tour of the room. I have this great eagle bronze piece that I love. I bought it in Massachusetts a few years ago and it's on a Nathan Margolis plant stand. It's very pretty. I bought this mirror. I paid full retail, which you know I hate to do because I thought the trim in particular looked so good with the mirror we had previously purchased at an auction and had practically stole the price was so good. So that's the mirror that's above the mantle. I put this little red side chair here next to my mother's secretary because I thought it would be really practical if I decided that I wanted to use the secretary. I could easily just turn the chair around and do what I need to do. I'd actually love to clean it up and make it look nice and keep the um, drawer down all the time or the top down all the time. But I know what will happen. The cats will jump on it and it will become a big old mess. So then coming to this side of the room, you can see this needlepoint picture. This was actually, I apologize for the glare. I don't think there's too much I can do about that, but this was actually in a neighbor's house. The neighbor was uh, in her 80s, she was moving, and her mother-in-law had made this for her as a wedding present. So 
She figured her mother-in-law made it sometime in the 1940s or so. And the stitches are incredibly fine. It actually looks more like a painting than needlepoint in some ways. So this definitely gets pride of place and we'll have this forever, I'm sure. This is an N.A. Moore painting. We have a lot of these. He was um, a painter in the 1800s. Um, he lived in Berlin, Connecticut. This lamp and little corner table was my mother's. I just put some books on there for now. I'm sure I'll continue to fuss with that. This is another beautiful N.A. Moore painting. And this is a great painting. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but the painter was, was Charles Porter. He was an African-American painter from Connecticut in the 1800s. He was very successful. A number of his still lifes hang in museums. I would love to have one of those, but I can't afford them. I love this little windmill because it reminds me of Amsterdam. And there's Iris. And here's the game table and that needlepoint footstool was my grandmother's. I don't know if she did the needlepoint or if my great-grandmother did it or if my mom or aunt did it. Maybe everybody pitched in. This is a great bronze sculpture. Love this. French lamp I bought at an auction a few months ago. And a collection of books with my Goodwill bookends that I love. This is another and a more painting. This might be my favorite one in the house. I don't know why, it's just so moody and interesting. And there's another one. And the secretary, that was my mother's. And we have all kinds of little fun objects in here. Let me open the door for you so you can see what I have. Some really beautiful antique books. This little bleak house was my grandmother's. And this little piece was also my grandmother. She bought it because it reminded her of my mother when she was a child. I think that's such a sweet story. And some additional books. And I have some Savin Rock mementos from the early 1900s, which I love. And then in this corner, I have another little N.A. Moore painting. And eventually in this corner, I think I need a standing lamp of some kind. This is kind of a dark corner. So I'll be on the lookout for that. And then down in the fireplace mantle is this great brass fan that I picked up at an estate sale. I've had this thing for years, it's so pretty. It's a little fussy to get it to stand exactly right because all of the, the individual fan pieces collapse into each other. So I actually have it wired to try to prevent some of that. And then some fireplace tools and this little guy was given to me by my mother's best friend, Ray. I love it. So pretty. So that's the room. Although it's still not 100% done, I'm happy overall with how the parlor is looking. I think the changes in the upholstery will work out really well, and I'll keep my eyes open for um, a standing lamp in the corner and maybe a lower kind of coffee table of some kind. So we'll see, and I'll definitely keep you posted. I'm sure I'll move things around and continue to fuss with it. So that's what I have for you today. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. That really helps my channel grow, and I hope to see you next time. Bye. Say goodbye, Indy. Goodbye.